one of the best treatments clinically proven to help with depression, anxiety, low libido, low drive, uh, inflammation. It's not a medicine. It's exercise, and it's proven to be better than almost any other medication available. All do right. you think this is uh, common knowledge? Yeah. I, I don't. Mm. I do not think, although it's becoming more common knowledge. You know, if you look at, and this isn't just my opinion, if you look at the data, look at anxiety and depression, for example. And we're talking about the, the most common forms, right? The kind of mild to moderate forms, because the extreme forms, uh, that's a whole different category. But if you look at the data, when they compare the most effective medic prescription medications that we've had now for decades, right? Like a SSRI, um, you know, drugs or other drugs that are similar, and you compare them to consistent exercise, the effects on depression and anxiety are very similar in the short term. In the long term, they start to trend better with exercise. And that's because exercise, you don't build up a tolerance to it like you do with a medication. Uh, you tend to, it tends to become more and more effective as you continue to do it. In fact, if, if you could bottle exercise into a pill, it would be a block, there would be nothing like it in the world. It would be a complete blockbuster. And it's, it sucks that people only uh, connect exercise to the physical yeah. effects. They just think it's work. Yeah. And, and it's the consistency really that provides the value once you really start to uh, add that into your daily activities, your daily life. Um, it, it's interesting to me because I, I look at it a lot like unused, unpotential used energy. And then at the end of the day, like your body starts to kind of like, you know, get restless with that. And it, it if you're all in your head for too long, you, you kind of get into this loop that you can't really break out of. Yeah. There, there's so much to unpack there too. Yeah. It, yeah. It definitely improves your physical health, which will also improve your mental health. We know that those are strongly connected. But the process of exercise is very much an empowering one um, where you're out doing it and you're struggling and you're finding that you're able to stay consistent. Oh my gosh, it's working. Look what I'm doing. I, I like this and I feel good about myself. And it, and it just gets better and better over the years. And there's so much, again, there's so much to unpack there why, why exercise is such an effective mental health tool. And nobody really talks about it, right? Everybody talks mm -hmm. about weight loss looking better, you know, maybe some discussions around mobility and movement and strength, which all great, all good. But I firmly believe the most profound effects that consistent, appropriate, I have to say appropriate, right? Because exercise can be abused just like anything. But the appropriate application of exercise by far is the are the mental health effects. And when I would train clients, it was the mental effects that were, that you would see and feel that were more profound. And those are the ones that people actually commented on that shocked them, that blew them away. Like, oh my God, I feel, I uh, feel so good, and I feel so yeah. happy, and this is so weird. Well, most of the antidepressant drugs aren't they? Their goal is really to to make it so you don't have like the the high highs and the low lows. It's just to keep you. No, kind their, of their goal is to keep you neutral, subscri subscribing. Well, to keep you <laughs> taking them, yeah. yeah, but like not to really feel like better necessarily, but just you know not not bad. Yeah, I I, I want to be clear, you know very clear that the um, prescription drugs have a, a very they have a place and I don't want to um, downplay them because I think that they they're, in, in many cases they're life saving. Yeah, of course. But what I'm trying to say is that exercise, appropriately applied exercise for many cases is so much better and even if you're on medication it only will make it that yeah, much more. Yeah, why not more, do both? Why it mm -hmm. makes it so much more effective. Yeah. We're starting to see now that they're starting to visit exercise as a treatment for mental health issues. And we already see that, right? Mm -hmm. Psychiatrists and psychologists will always will already recommend that people exercise and move and, and do stuff like that. But it's not a part of the protocol. But with the, with, with the clinical evidence, I believe that these, these clinics and, and therapists should, I think a very effective strategy would be to partner with exercise specialists and say, look, here's a deal. Yeah. We're going to do this with therapy. We're going to do this with medication. And also, here's so-and-so, and they're going to help you with exercise and activity because in the studies, it's so effective. I think we're going to have to when you look at, um, you know, we make that comparison about Wally. -E. But over here. <laughs> you know, we yeah. kind of like lightly joke about that, but there's there's some truth to the potential of us moving in that direction of like, not having to move really to get access, do everything you need to do, make money, whatever. So I think that it's going to become necessary. And I think we're in the middle of that transition right now. And maybe this, the pandemic accelerated that a little bit of people's awareness around why it's so important that you exercise. 
And I think we're going to start to see that over the next couple of years, more and more people. I mean, and look at these, these businesses, although, I mean, Peloton and them are tanking right now, but like your at home fitness stuff that's becoming more popular and the, like, gyms are blowing up again. Are they still going? I was going to ask you, have you been following up on like your prediction on what's happening right now? I've are talked we, to a few people that are in the industry. It's and now it's hard to say because part of it could be that the market washed out a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. So what whoever's left now is they are, you know, they, they now own a larger piece of the market potentially. But, um, you're seeing a surge and I think part of it is because people are feeling really bad, uh, worse than they have in a long time. And it happened so fast, right? In a two year period, our obesity rate, uh, accelerated to the point where we are at the point now with obesity where we would have been maybe in six or seven years at the, at the pace that we had before. So it just sped up. And I, and, and I think people are kind of like, I want to move, you know? So now will it stick? I don't know. That's the hard, that's mm -hmm. the hard thing to predict. I hope it does. Right. But I do think that look. I'll speak personally. Um, I'm I I battle with my own uh, demons. I, I've you know I, I I have ADD, and when I was in school, I had trouble sitting still and paying attention, and I can have my own paranoia and all that stuff. Exercise, and I've said this for so long, and I tell this to my wife all the time. It's so therapeutic for me. I don't know where I would be. I could not imagine if I had if if for a month and a half, if I couldn't exercise at all. Like, I mean, you guys are looking at me and I know you're trying not to make funny faces. Could you imagine how I would be if I had no, if I couldn't do anything for a month and a half? Yeah. Um, it's so therapeutic to me. It's definitely necessary. Well, most likely you would, you would seek out something else to medicate. Yeah. To medicate or fill that void. Yeah. And what just happens. What's great is that if you do move in the direction of using fit health and fitness, although it can be dangerous in itself, or I shouldn't say dangerous, it could be unhealthy it could be abused right yeah. like anything with like anything else at least on the way there it's the, you're gonna get a lot of positive benefits from it right because obviously there are people that um, are addicted to exercise and fitness yeah. and their body and looking at themselves that it starts to hurt or harm other parts of their life or people that are connected to them um, but in in the pursuit of that or in the process of that there's a lot of positive health benefits that they get from it, Not mental that, and physical. Yeah, and you're right. And anything can be pathological. I don't care what it is. You can make anything pathological. But if you talk to anybody, and you guys know people like this, if you talk to anybody who's been doing it for a long time, they went through that process and then came out of it. It's such a learn. It's the most underrated personal growth vehicle I can think of. You know what I mean? Like it teaches you that you'll never be perfect. That's mm -hmm. an important lesson to learn, right? That oh, and, and accept it. Mm -hmm. It teaches you that it's okay to fail. You're gonna like you try a new exercise, you suck at it the first fifty times that you do it. Teaches you not to compare to others. You have to, yeah. Because it's, like I said, at some point you realize like, oh yeah, I'm never gonna look like Arnold. Did. Like I realized that in my late teens, and then I accepted it and then continued. It teaches you to love your body because if you stick with it for twenty or thirty years, at some point you you stop hating yourself because you're starting to enjoy the process. It makes you feel self-reliant and empowered. Mm -hmm. You feel empowered because it's something you're doing for your own health and your own sanity and well-being. There's so many lessons, right? Yeah. So you, it's just you this, literally see progress happen right in front of your face. You do, and so it's just in, it's just this very powerful mental health, personal growth vehicle, and it's never it's almost never talked about in that way. And I feel like that's the angle mm -hmm. that we should talk about it. Because I think if you set all of the value of exercise on weight loss and how you look, right. you're going to set a lot of people up for early failure and then they'll get discouraged and they won't do it. But if you tell people, hey, here's how it's going to make you feel, here's the positive mental health effects, they will feel that. They will yeah. see that. And then, and then what will happen as a side effect is the fat loss and all that other stuff. Do you foresee in the future um, more companies building health and fitness around like the structure of your day at work? like starting the day off with like a half hour, hour of some sort of physical activity before. We've already talked about like, what's this? I think they they did this a long time ago. Like uh, the average hours that the, yeah. the eight hour employee actually works hmm. in the day. It's like not even half. So it's not like it would carve into their productivity at work. Like we're, oh shoot, you got, we do an hour of fitness in the day. Now you no longer have enough time to write code or do whatever. It's like, they already are, are that unproductive as it is and actually doing something that's physical like that not only would benefit them physically but mentally and potentially I mean we know I know it's wondering when other companies will figure this out they'll be more productive so at what point do companies start building that into 
their day. Yeah, you know what the challenge Smart with, companies will. But, they they yeah. will, but the challenge with that is you're going to get pushback from yeah. people who are saying, um, I don't want to, or yeah, I, I feel fat shamed, or I'm not able to. You said that before, but I think, so I, I think. I mean, I think if you give them the option, and then you, you, have, you couldn't make it mandatory. It has to be part of the culture. I know in Japan, um, and I know Doug, maybe you can correct me. It, it it was it's been a part of the culture for a long time that companies would have employees start the day off with do some tai chi calisthenics or... and uh, exercise. Yeah, uh, right. Is that is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. yeah. And so I imagine it, that's so I imagine it would start at a place like that. So I don't I don't foresee your you know a Google or Facebook you know having a you know strength training workout for hour four where you're going to have a lot mm -hmm. of people. Oh, I have these injuries, these limitations. Oh, I can't do it. Yeah. Versus. We're going to do something like meditative or walking. Like imagine if mm -hmm. just like every day, I mean, we, we do this right off air. We, 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 we talk about this where there's times where we get stuck at work and we'll just interrupt our day and go, Hey, let's just go for a walk. Yeah. And we, we find that so productive, right? Kind mm -hmm. of clears our mind, gets us outside for a little bit. We know. So what happens when you see, I, I foresee something like that. I don't foresee this. And maybe some companies I will take it to saying. The, so let's work out. Right. So you're not going to get like the pushback of, I can't, if you could walk, walk yeah. you, you should be able to do it in a structured way where we make sure and i think just making sure everybody is walking for an hour every day you'd be amazed on how much that will increase everybody's activity because very few people are even stepping that much in a normal day I think it all makes sense but i'm so jaded by the last few years of how pushed down like logical means of of keeping you healthy strong resilient like we're just completely not even part of the conversation like we got we got a lot of work to do to get people off of pharma's teeth yeah. yeah, yeah, but it's coming that way right now, don't you feel? Like, don't, I mean, I mean, I think some people, but but honestly, the mass majority of people are still think that like taking pills is going to solve. You problems. know why? It's because it no, it's a decision you have to make for yourself. Exactly, because it's a, it's not a, it's not a profitable message. So if you're a politician or if you're a company that's selling a product, it is not profitable to sit there and say, hey here's something you could do for yourself and it doesn't cost any money. I feel like it's only going to take one big successful company to implement it and show positive returns for it to kick off though. I mean, look what happened when, and I don't know who did it first. Was it, was it uh, Facebook or Google when they started to disrupt the way your workspace was done? Now yeah. everybody does that. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Like that we did, we did work. big breakthrough. It was a huge this. breakthrough. We did workspace a very traditional way for decades, yeah. decades. And then all of a sudden, a, a big company comes in and disrupts the way that landscape looks. That's a good point. And now everybody models it. So all it's going to take is a a Facebook, a Google, a an Amazon. Yeah, a leader in the industry that's already a successful company to say, you know what? We're going to take care of our employees' mental and physical health, and we're going to start easy with something like, hey, every day, the way your first hour looks is we go on walks or yeah. something. Something. Maybe there's an way. intercom and 50, right. first like, 15 I don't know. minutes, we're going to do these stretches. And we're right. Gonna do I don't know minutes. exactly what it looks like, right? But I, I know I, Virgin was, like, before all this stuff, was really making headway with that with a lot of corporate fitness initiatives, mm -hmm. and, and they're doing a lot of cool things. But, yeah. I think, I mean, I hope you're right. Like, I hope that there is like a shiny example of that. That's like a very much of a brand that everybody like recognizes and is sort of leading the way in terms of like our employees are doing this. They're way more productive. They're, you know, they're not missing any sick days, like all these benefits. Listen, the, the wild part is if you can, if you can improve it by one to 3%. Huge, huge savings, huge, yeah. huge savings. So that's why it, it kind and of, that's, the, and that's the math that, definitely and that's is scratching the surface. That. Right. So that's, that's the part that kind of blows my mind. That, that the the Amazons of Facebook, these companies that employ tens of thousands of people, haven't pieced that together. It's like we don't need it to be hella successful. Yeah, we just needed to change one percent of the lives that are out there, and that makes a huge difference. Here, I'll make it even more dramatic. Yeah. Okay, healthy people uh, are more efficient. They make different choices in the market, so healthy people are more likely to buy and want products that serve their true health which means you'll have more innovation and more money going to those products versus products that medicate and distract and aren't good for us. Healthy people innovate better. So they're smarter. They innovate better. They solve better problems. Healthy people are less angry. They're less anxious. So you have less actions that are related to anger and anxiety. Healthy people make better parents. They make better partners. If right now I could snap my fingers and make everybody in America just healthy, you would see it would make such a profound difference. It would it would be massive. I'm going to go out and say you don't For even sure. have to make them healthy. You just have to move them in that direction by a couple percent. Yeah. 
right? Yep. I mean, that in itself will have enough positive, you know, uh, effects from it that I think will pay back companies, pay back people. I just, I don't know. I feel like we're right on the cusp of this, like, tipping revolution. Point. Yeah, yeah, of where we're going to go that direction. It is. It is you know, like definitely the changing. Revolution. Stupid. <laughs> 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 Let me tell you, Doug. Sal, again. Andrew, could you? Sal Stradamus yeah. coming out with the uh, predictions. Adam and I were like, you know, the closing <laughs> machines. <laughs> Just threw that in there. That was a big book commercial. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> no it wasn't. Actually, By the way, you can get Sal's it, book at Amazon anywhere. It, <laughs> no, it wasn't. You can. Amazon, Target, anywhere you want. Yeah. Barnes and Noble. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.